Well, hello, scrappers. Mike here. Welcome back to my channel. And I guess this is part five of me processing the material for my stock pot. Uh, this may just be an addendum. This may not be a long video. We will see. We will see how it goes. Uh, because I just can't seem to leave well enough alone. Now, in the last video, I got a fair amount of this palladium salt, palladium ammonium chloride here. Um, but I'm not sure it's enough to bother with processing to metal sponge. I might just let this accumulate until I have a fairly decent amount. And this stuff might be polluted with some platinum, too. So if I have more of this stuff in the future, it might be worth trying to do a separation to try and purify the metal, get pure palladium and pure platinum out of it. Right now, I suspect, don't know for sure, but I suspect that's a mix of metals. And then over here, this stuff over here, well, these strange green crystals, these are the result of um, an abortive attempt at getting more palladium out of this stuff. Um, I screwed this up royally, screwed the pooch. Um, and we lost some of the palladium that was in there. But I'm wondering if a lot of it is still in there. Because this showed a really strong um, indication for palladium with a stannous chloride test. So I'm thinking, you know, it looks like most of the copper stayed behind. Maybe most of the palladium stayed behind in there, too. And if I can extract a significant amount more palladium from this, maybe I'll have enough to bother with trying to reduce it to metal. So we'll see. So I think what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to rehydrate this. We'll give it a stannous chloride test and see if it's still got a fair amount of platinum in it. And if it does, we'll figure out a way to uh, try and uh, get that platinum. Oh, and by the way, I'm still waiting on feedback from you guys about whether you want me to see whether about whether you want to see me try and reduce this stuff, even though I don't think I have that much. So I asked for feedback in the last video. And when that video goes live, hopefully before this video is done, um, we'll see what you guys have to say. That may uh, determine whether I actually try to process this stuff or not. But anyway, hopefully by then we'll have more palladium that hopefully is hiding in here. So let me get this stuff in the fume hood and we'll start rehydrating it. And uh, we'll get a, uh, a stannous chloride test on it and make a determination about whether it is worth trying to go after that palladium in there. Any that's left. I think there's some left. As the liquid that came off this did not show a really strong indication for palladium like it did before. I got all this crystal growth in there. So let me get the fume hood and get it rehydrating. Okay, so let me get some purified water on this. And we'll see if we can get these crystals to go back into solution. I suspect, but I don't know for sure, but I suspect they are mostly... Ammonium hydroxide, in which case they should dissolve pretty well in eh, four or five hundred milliliters of water. In fact, it looks like it's dissolving pretty thoroughly already. I haven't even put any heat to it or stirred it up. Oh, yeah, this stuff's all dissolving nicely. Okay, so I'll put a little heat to it there and we'll let it go and dissolve, and uh, then we'll see what we got in solution. Okay, it's only been like a minute, and most of the crystals in there have dissolved. So I'm thinking everything that's dissolved was probably ammonium chloride because this got very, very cold. And that's what happens when ammonium chloride dissolves. Now there's some other stuff in there that did not immediately dissolve. So... That may not be ammonium chloride. That may be something else. It's also it's also a darker color, which leads me to think it could be some palladium. So we'll definitely wait for this to heat up and uh, get all that stuff in the solution. At least all of it will go in the solution. And we'll give it a stannous chloride test. All right, I took this off the heat, 
I wandered away from it for a little bit, and it got hotter than I intended. It actually started boiling a little bit. So I didn't really want it to get that hot, but maybe that was a good thing, because it looks like pretty much everything has gone back into solution, even that uh, dark-colored sediment that was in there. So I don't know what that was, but uh, everything's gone back into solution, so we should be able to test this with some stannous chloride and see if we still have any palladium in here. I'm hoping that there's still a fair amount in there. Let me zoom in on the spotlight for you. So hopefully you can see the reaction when I put the stannous chloride on it. Well, yes, I would say there is still palladium in there. Um, is it enough to worry about going after? That's the question. It certainly looks like a weaker indication than what we were getting before. But there is still palladium there. So, okay. So, the last time I tried to do this, I did it hoax way. Well, she actually mentioned several ways in her book to do it. And I did the one that seems to be her, her preferred way, using ammonium chloride and uh, sodium chlorate. And that worked really great with the big, highly concentrated um, thing that I had. But it didn't work so good with this. So another way to get the precious metals out is to cement it out with zinc. And I think maybe we will try cementing the metals out with zinc this time. Uh, unfortunately, I'm going to get the copper that's contaminating this too. I was hoping to just drop the palladium out of this stuff and not bring the copper along for the ride. But if we get, you know, enough metal out of here, I can always redissolve it in aqua regia, free of all of the other stuff in here now. And... Uh, then try separating it again using Hope's other method, which will allow me to just bring the palladium down. So that's a possibility. But we have a problem. We have a problem. I live in Florida. I live in central Florida. And there's a hurricane coming right at us. It's coming ashore tonight. So I've got to batten down the hatches here. And we will pick this up once the storm is passed and the power's back on. And sometimes it takes weeks for the power to come back on when the hurricane comes through because we're in a rural area here and low priority for getting that fixed. So we'll see how long it takes. So I'm just going to bat everything down, put this stuff away in a safe place, and we'll pick up again later in this video after the hurricane has passed and we've picked up the pieces here and the power's back on. So see you then. All right, it is a few days later. The hurricane has passed and we got lucky we dodged a bullet. It went ashore quite a bit further north than the initial predictions were. So we didn't suffer any real damage here at all. Just a lot of rain, some wind, uh, messed up yard. Even our power stayed on, which is a first. I don't think I remember a single instance of a major hurricane coming ashore within 200 miles of us where our power stayed on. Okay, so that's a first. Anyway, it's time to get back to this stuff. Um... What am I going to do with it next? Well, I was going to filter it, but you know what? I don't see a darn thing on the bottom of this beaker. It looks like everything that was in there went back into solution, um, surprisingly. But this had been filtered before all that stuff crystallized out. So everything that crystallized out, I guess, should have been able to go right back into solution. So I don't think I'm going to bother filtering it. What I think I'm going to do is I'm going to use zinc to... Uh, cement out any precious metal left in here, any palladium. We'll get the copper too, but that's just, you know, what are you going to do? You're going to get the copper. We can try separating that down the road um, with a different process if it looks like there's enough to bother with. But the first thing I'm going to do, because I've learned a lesson, I've learned a lesson in, back in the, the last video. First thing I'm going to do is reacidify this stuff a bit. Yeah, this stuff... Uh, this stuff was 
rehydrated with just uh, distilled water, basically. So I know that there isn't any muriatic acid in here. So I'm going to put in, I don't know, maybe 50 milliliters worth, just to make sure that this stuff is good and acidic again before we start adding zinc to it. I think that's probably a good idea, just to help the reaction along and eliminate any excess zinc. So let me go get my zinc. All right, so I've got some pure zinc here in the form of a roll of zinc strip. Let me get this unwrapped, and we'll cut some links off and drop them in and see what happens. Oh, this stuff's thicker than I thought it was going to be. Maybe that's good. Maybe there's enough here. I have two more rolls of this, by the way. But maybe there's enough in this one roll. I don't think there's that much metal in here. So we should be able to uh, cement it out pretty easy with just what I've got here, I'm thinking. Well, let's see what happens. When I drop some of this in, it should be interesting. Oh, yeah. Getting a pretty good reaction. I'm not doing this in my fume hood because I've got something else going on in there. And I think all that's going to be coming out of here is hydrogen. So we'll do it out here. There shouldn't be any noxious fumes coming out. So we'll let those pieces of zinc go in there for a while and see how that does. And then we'll see if we need more. I'm thinking, since this color in here is probably mostly from copper, once we've cemented all the metals out of this, this should go clearish. So we shall see. Let's just let it go. Okay, do you see that black stuff floating around in there? That should be the metals that we're cementing out of solution with the zinc. All right, I think this is working. I do believe the color's fading. Oh, we're getting a lot of black stuff floating around in there. Wow. And that's still the first original two pieces of zinc. I haven't put any more in. So, okay. I guess something's going on in there. Okay, the first two pieces of zinc seem to be fully dissolved in there. Oh, this got really warm. Wow. There is a lot of stuff in there. It's hard to believe there is that much metal in this solution, but the zinc strip I'm using claims to be three nines fine. Four nines fine, actually, now that I look at it closer. Four nines fine, so it shouldn't be leaving anything behind as it dissolves, so I guess that's just the metal that was in there. So... Some palladium, hopefully. I'm sure there's a fair amount of copper in there. Um, so we'll put in another piece. So we'll just keep this up until it looks like we've got all the metal out of the solution. This should become clear. I mean, look how much it's faded so far. So uh, we'll just keep this up. I'll cut another piece off here and have it ready to go in case it's needed. Well, look at that. It looks like it's clear, but if I get down here and take a close look, I can still see there's a slight greenish color to it. And I figure copper is more reactive than palladium. So if there's any trace of copper in there, i got to assume there's still palladium, because I'm thinking the copper would come out first. But we are really close. So I'm going to put about half a piece in there, and we'll see if this gets the job done. I think it will. We are really, really close. So we'll just let that piece of uh, zinc dissolve in there. Wow, there is a lot of stuff in that beaker. 
I'm sure it's very, very lightweight. I can see it moving with the water. Oh, that's that's very warm, too. I can, I'm sure it's very lightweight. So, you know, if I was to dry it out, it's probably not very much powder at all. It just looks very voluminous in there. But really, it's not. And I'll tell you what, that last piece of zinc is not reacting all that strongly. So, yeah, I think we are about done. But I'm going to let this go for a while. And then... Uh, that last piece of zinc doesn't fully dissolve, I'll pull it out and then we'll decide what to do with this stuff. Okay, that looks pretty darn colorless. I would say by the time this last piece of zinc is done reacting, we will have all the metal out of solution. Cool. That worked nicely. Yeah. Okay, so we'll just uh, let this go until it quits. And I put my uh, other pieces of zinc I cut away because I don't think I'm going to need them. And we'll just wait for this to be done. All right, I went inside, had some lunch, come back out. Looks like the reaction is done. I don't see any unreacted zinc in there. So... And then the liquid is crystal clear. So I'm assuming we've got all the metal out of solution, but we're going to do a stannous chloride test just to be sure. Just to make sure we've got all the palladium out of there. Okay. If not, I'll put some more zinc in. Well, you look at that. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. This is fresh stannous chloride, too. Not a trace of color of any sort. That's showing up for you. It's crystal clear. Okay, so I guess we've got all of the metal out of solution. So I am going to pour off this liquid and start giving this metal in here some distilled water rinses to get the zinc and any residual acid out of it. And uh, then we'll go on from there. Okay, I'll just pour the liquid off into this beaker here. And I think rather than just rinsing this stuff, I think I'm going to put it in the fume hood and give it some distilled water boils to really clean it up. Yeah. Lost a couple little crumbs of metal, but not too much. You know, that has a distinct look of copper to it. I'll bet most of that metal is copper. I'll bet the palladium is just a small percentage. Okay, let me get this in the fume hood and we'll give it some distilled water boils. Okay, so in goes some purified water. And we'll give this a good boil. I'll do this two or three times. And then we should have some pretty much uh, zinc and acid-free metal here that we can uh, move on to the next step with. Okay, we are boiling in distilled water there, or purified water, really. Um, okay, I'm going to change out the water. I'm going to do that a couple more times, boil it again. And then uh, we'll decide what to do with the powder after that, once it's good and clean. All right, the rinses are done. And we are drying out that powder, and we'll see what we've got when it's all dried out and where to go from there. All right, this material's all dried out. Just out of curiosity, let's weigh it up and see what we've got. The scale wants to work today. All right. And this looks like, it really looks like copper, I have to say. It's got the color. The liquid was green. The ammonia test showed there was copper there, so I suspect this is mostly copper. I mean, it would be nice if it was all palladium, but I, I'm pretty sure it's mostly copper. One little crumb got away over here. Ooh, it turned into a lot of crumbs when I tried to pick it up. Yeah, okay. Anyway... 
call it uh, 2.8 grams. 2.8-ish grams of uh, mixed metal here, which is probably mostly copper, okay? So, do I want to try and go after however much palladium is in this stuff? That's really the question. Or do I just want to set it aside along with the palladium ammonium chloride that I've got in there? And just wait until I have more material to try and process it. So that's the question. That's the question. Let me give that question a little bit of thought. Okay, so I think the real question here is whether I want to try and process this stuff, what little I have, or just store it until I have more. Now, I've given this some thought. I went away. I looked at the comments that are starting to roll in on episode four. Um, and here's my thinking on this, okay? I'm thinking that just storing this until I have more would probably be the best way to go. But, but, on the other hand, it's taken me years to accumulate this much palladium. So it might take me a couple more years to double this amount. And really, I'd like to see some palladium, <laughs> some palladium metal before I'm done here. So I'm thinking what I'm going to do is see if I can extract any more palladium from this stuff to add to this. And then maybe we will reduce this in my uh, home-built compelling oven to metal sponge. All right. Just I know I'm not going to get much. I'd be, I'd be surprised if there's more than a gram or two here. But uh, it would be interesting to see some actual palladium metal, and I can store that until I get more, okay? So I think what I'm going to do, since this video is not too long yet, I'm going to put this in the fume hood, and we're going to dissolve everything in here in Aparigia. Just a small amount. Just a small amount. I, I want to keep this concentrated as possible. I think a lot of the problem I had last time, it was just too dilute. So, maybe 100 milliliters of aqua regia at the most. See if we can get all this metal in solution. I know it's mostly copper, but there's some palladium in there too. And then we will uh, see if we can uh, precipitate the palladium as palladium ammonium chloride, like this stuff in here, and add to this. So, let me get started. Let me glove up, get this in the fume hood, and we will put some aqua regia to it and see what happens. Yeah, I'm seeing this mostly as a learning experience at this point. I'm not expecting to get a lot of palladium out of this. But uh, as a learning experience, I think it's pretty invaluable. I've learned a lot so far. I hope some of you out there watching have learned something too. So in will go with about 100 milliliters of hydrochloric acid. And looking at the comments on episode four, NoFX says that I probably would not be able to separate the metals. I mean, this is probably polluted with some platinum. And I think she's 100% right. I, I think separating the metals out of such a small amount of material is going to be pretty much impossible. So in the end, what I'm going to wind up with here is just, you know, some mixed metal here, mixed PGMs, but uh, we will save the mixed PGMs until I have enough to maybe do a separation, okay? Let's see, I'm just going to start with a little bit of nitric acid here, because there is a lot of fine metal in here. Well, that's about a milliliter. Put some heat to it. This uh, hot plate's actually still warm from something I did earlier, so this could take off pretty dramatically as it gets a little warmer here. So I don't want to put in too much nitric at once. I want to have an explosive boil over. Had a few of those lately. They make you gun shy, let me tell you. So anyway, yeah, I don't think I will try to separate the metals, but it might be nice to actually see if I can reduce this stuff to metal. So 
we might try that, especially if I get any more palladium out of here. Um, then I think it'll probably be worthwhile sticking it in the compelling oven and uh, reducing it to metal sponge. Um, I also have some formic acid, so we could try the formic acid method, but I think, I think it's easier just to put it in the compelling oven and be done with it. So, okay, we'll let this continue to warm up. I see some activity going on in there. I'm sure it'll probably need more nitric acid than that. There's, there's a fair amount of metal there. The copper will chew it up, but uh, I'm going to put it in in small doses as this warms up just so we don't get a big boil over. And I'll show you as I go. Well, look at that. Um, I think that's more boiling than anything because I think I had the heat turned up too high. And like I said, the hot plate was, start, was warm to start with. So I turned the heat way down. Uh, it looks like it needs more nitric acid, but I don't want to put it in while it's this hot and boiling because that's, that's just asking for a boil over. Okay, so I'm going to let this cool down some and then uh, I'll put in the next dose of nitric acid and I will do it very carefully and slowly. Okay, change of plans. Um, all the metal seems to be in solution. Uh, I was going to put a little bit more in once it cooled down, but I just swirled it around a little bit. and Well, I could see through the bottom that there, everything appears to be in solution. There does not appear to be any free metal in there. So I'm thinking it doesn't need any more nitric acid. So I'm going to turn the heat off on this entirely and cool it down a little bit. I'm going to denox it. I bought some new sulfamic acid because I was worried back in, what episode was it? Three, I think, where I uh, precipitated the gold out. I had a lot of trouble precipitating the gold out. I was wondering if my sulfamic acid had gone bad and didn't denox the, um, the gold solution adequately. Uh, so, some people in the comments on episode three had some other ideas and good ideas, but still, I bought fresh sulfamic acid. So, I will mix up a very small amount of uh, saturated sulfamic acid solution, and we will denox this once it cools down a little bit, and then we will move on to trying to get any palladium out of it that we can. Okay, let me get this stuff denoxed. Yeah, I, this fooled me into thinking there was still metal on the bottom because it's just so dark, because it's so concentrated. It's basically a very, very dark green, greenish yellow, I guess, from all that metal dissolved in such a small amount of liquid. So this is my usual saturated solution of sulfamic acid. I'm not seeing any reaction at all, which surprises and somewhat worries me. I would think... There should be something. I put in exactly enough uh, nitric acid to get that metal in there. There's a little bit of bubbling. I don't, know, I don't want to dilute this stuff too much, but I want to make sure it's denoxed too. So we'll stop right there. Okay. All right. Let me. Uh, We'll let this cool down, and then uh, we'll move on to the next step. All right, so we're going to do just like we did before. going to mix up some saturated solution of ammonium chloride. I'm not going to mix up as much before as before because I'm sure there's not that much palladium in here, and I don't want to dilute this stuff excessively, okay? going to mix up a little bit. I'm thinking that's probably going to be enough. So, Hoke says this reaction needs to be done hot. Well, the last time I did this hot, it didn't work out too good. Let's dump in a little bit more. Not seeing the precipitate form yet. The 
this may not be nearly as concentrated in palladium as the other stuff was. I mean, it gave a strong showing for palladium, but the other stuff was such a strong showing, it went black immediately. Such a dark orange, it was basically black. This stuff didn't give that kind of reaction. Uh-oh. 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 More fodder for the blooper reel, clearly. Yeah, glad I did this in the fume hood. Yeah, that was a problem. So we're not going to do it hot. We're going to do it. This is still pretty warm after coming off of the hot plate in there. So we're going to do it out here at room temperature. But this is, like I say, still pretty warm. So I'm going to put it in this casserole dish just in case it does decide to boil over again. We'll catch everything. It looks like we've got a pretty good saturated solution of ammonium chloride going on here. Yeah, I did the uh, I did the bulk of the stuff where I got all this at room temperature and it worked. So we're going to do that again and try to avoid any potential boil overs. And I'm not going to overly dilute this stuff. I know there's probably not a huge amount of palladium in here, so I'm only going to put in a little bit of the ammonium chloride solution, thinking we probably don't need a huge amount of it. Let's see here. So we are right below 200 milliliters. So I'm going to put it in about 100 milliliters worth. Maybe not even that much quite. Okay. Yeah. All right. Now I probably ought to be doing this in the fume hood, but the fume hood is busy too, so... I know this produces a little bit of chlorine gas. I have a fan at my back blowing it that away, away from me. So we will uh, we'll try this like this. So I got the sodium chlorate here. I'm going to put a little bit of sodium chlorate in there. And we'll see what happens. There should still be some hydrogen chloride in here. I know the problem I had before was it wasn't... Uh, it wasn't... Um, acidified enough, but there should still be some hydrogen chloride in here, so I'm thinking. So we're just going to put in a tiny, tiny amount of sodium chlorate crystals here. Oh, isn't that an interesting reaction? Look at that. Red stuff's forming. <laughs> I do believe we are getting the palladium out of solution. I think this is working. All right, put a little bit more of this stuff in here. Yeah, I do believe it's working. I also believe, though, that we're not getting that much palladium. And it seems to want to go back into solution. Let me put a bit more of this in here. And a bit more of this. Yeah, because it, 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 it came out of solution as a red cloud, but then it sort of went away again. So, oh, now we got some fizzing. Hoke says there should be considerable fizzing going on. So, now it's behaving like she says it ought to. So, oh, yeah. I just got a slight whiff of chlorine. I'm going to back off. And oh yeah, suddenly it wants to uh, react pretty seriously. We're just going to let that sit there and do its thing until it's done. And then see what we've got. And I think I mentioned in uh, the last video that I suspect there are other chemicals that could produce this reaction. If you can't find the uh, sodium chlorate out there and I know it is very hard to find it's been banned in a lot of places that uh, I'm thinking maybe sodium hypochlorite or calcium hypochlorite might work although you know I'm only an amateur chemist I don't know for sure and I certainly haven't tried it 
I got to back off a little more. Fortunately, I have this lapel microphone now. You can still hear me. But uh, yeah, the chlorine gas is pretty heavy over there. So I'm backing up towards my fan. Get some fresh air here. Well, we certainly got a reaction. It's died down now. The question is, do we have a precipitate? I'm really not seeing much of a precipitate in there. I'm going to put in just a little bit more sodium chlorate. And uh, if we don't get anything now, I'll just, uh, I'll just call it and uh, we'll work with what we've got. This liquid can go in my stock pot. And we'll recover whatever palladium's in it. But it did form a red cloud, the first few crystals that went in, but they seem to redissolve. So anyway, I'm just going to let this sit here and react for a while. In fact, let me cover it up. Keep the chlorine in. Maybe it needs the chlorine. And uh, we'll take a look at it once it looks like it's done fizzing and see if we've got any kind of precipitate. Okay, it's been a couple of minutes, and I would say this has been a success. There is a precipitate on the bottom of the beaker. So let me get set up to filter that. I may let it sit for a little while longer. Hopefully it won't go into solution again, because we're still bubbling a lot of chlorine out of the liquid there, and I'd like to filter it after it's done doing that. So I may let it sit and then we'll filter it. Okay, before we filter this stuff, let's do a stannous chloride test on it and see if we got the palladium out of solution, okay? Get a little bit of it here, put it in the spot plate. Put some fresh stannous chloride on it. Let me zoom in first so you can see what's going on here. There's should be interesting. Let's see if we've got all the palladium out of solution. Hope that's in good focus. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, that's interesting. Okay. I don't know if that showed up. It went slightly purple at first. Then it went orange. Then it went green. Then it went back to orange. This is like a whole rainbow of colors going on there. So I'm thinking the slight purple at first, we've got some gold residue in here, which, okay, not surprised. So got a little bit of gold in solution. Tiny, tiny bit though, that was very slight purple. Then it went orange and green, which tells me there's still a little bit of palladium in there, but not very much. I mean, it's not enough to worry about. So after we filter this, this liquid could just go into my stock pot and whatever gold and palladium is still in there will just be cemented out on the copper in the stockpot and some year in the future we'll get it again okay along with a lot more of its friends so anyway so i think we've i think we've uh, precipitated out the vast bulk of the palladium it's down there on the bottom of the beaker so i'm going to get set up to filter it here and and I've made some more saturated solution of ammonium chloride over here. I'll, I'll put it in my wash bottle here, and we'll use it to uh, wash this stuff down once we get it in the filter. So let me get this filled up, finish get set up for filtration, and we will filter this stuff and see how much more palladium ammonium chloride we've got in the bottom of that beaker. It doesn't look like a huge amount, but, you know, hey, we got it. We might as well capture it. Okay, so we're all set up here for filtration. Let me plug the vacuum pump in. Unplug some. Okay. This seems to have... Oh, yeah. It's some red stuff on the end of the... Uh, the end of the stir rod here. I'll have to wipe that off and store the paper with that. Yeah. Probably not showing up, but we got red stuff in here. All right. So I'm going to dump this all through this filter and wash the green stuff out of the filter with my saturated solution of ammonium chloride here. 
and hopefully we'll have some more pretty pure palladium ammonium chloride solution. And my experience back in episode two and three showed that this stuff will redissolve in water. Uh, it's not super soluble, but it will redissolve in water. So uh, apparently using a saturated solution of ammonium chloride prevents it, for the most part, from redissolving. So we can use it for washing down the filter there. Oh yeah, there's a there's some there's some red stuff in there. It's probably not showing up. That liquid's still really green, but there's a good amount of red red stuff in there. Nice. Okay. So we'll let this filter. I'll give you a look at what's going on in the filter once we're done. And then uh, we'll figure out where to go next. All right. So here's what I'm catching on the filter. Coming along nicely. I got to wash some more of the green color out of this filter. Wash the copper away down into this waste glass down here. But yeah, we got a little bit more palladium ammonium chloride here. Nice. Yeah, I know it's not much, and some of you out there in the audience probably thinking this wasn't worth going after, but you know, it's a learning experience. Like I said earlier, I'm learning how to do this. Maybe in the future, I'll have a lot more. Oh yeah, that green color's starting to wash out. Yeah, maybe in the future I'll have a lot more, and I'll, I'll, I'll know how to do this then. So, yeah, I'm looking at this more as a learning experience than as a way to get a whole lot of palladium. And hopefully you guys and gals out there in YouTube land are learning a little bit along with me. Alright, so I'm going to continue washing the green out of this filter, and then I'll let the vacuum pull on it until it's fairly dry in there and we'll pop it out and we'll add it to the filter in here and I'll have a little bit more palladium salt sweet all right so this is pretty dry pull this out of here there's our palladium ammonium chloride salt let me wipe the end of this stir rod off on this filter too because it has some red stuff on it and we're going to put it away with the filter that we got from the first extraction all right huh, that went pretty well pretty painlessly and pretty much by the numbers okay so one thing i need to do is let me uh Hook the vacuum back up to this. I am going to put a lot of distilled water through this because there's a lot of uh, ammonium chloride in this frit filter now, which I need to get out before I use it for something else and it causes a problem. So let me get that out. Let me uh, clean up here, do the dishes, uh, get the workbench cleared off, and then we'll figure out where to go from here. All righty. So we got our palladium salt. I think we've got all of it that could be practically uh, recovered from this stuff. I mean, there's still a trace of it in here, but I'm going to put this liquid into my stock pot and not worry about the trace. There's a trace of gold and a trace of palladium in here. They'll just cement out in the stock pot, start the cycle all over again. Also getting some, in the few minutes this has been sitting here, we're getting another precipitate in there, but I think it's just ammonium chloride some white crystals on the bottom. So I think it's just ammonium chloride coming out of solution. So I hope it is. But it doesn't look like anything valuable. Certainly it's not red. So I'm going to dump this into my stock pot. And uh, yeah, I think this went pretty darn well. Uh, couldn't be much uh, happier with it. And if you guys are happy with how this video has worked out, give me a like. Give me a thumbs up, please. I'd appreciate it. And leave me a comment. If you uh, think I've screwed up on anything, you think I could improve things, you think I'm doing it right, give me an attaboy, whatever, I don't care. Just leave a comment if you've got something to say. Um, and in the next video, we will try turning this palladium into metal. I don't think I'm going to get very much metal, but like I said, I would like to see some palladium metal, 
And this has been a learning experience. So turning this into metal will be a learning experience too. And we'll see how that goes. So come along for the ride. Subscribe to see my future videos. And check out my two other channels. Uh, Electric Geek 64 where my electronics and retro computing stuff are. And Mike's Lapidary and Fossils where my rock polishing, rock hounding, rock hunting, um, fossil hunting, and fossil prep stuff is. So check out those two channels when you get a chance. Please like, subscribe, and comment there too if you would. I would appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks a lot for watching this one. Bye.